Hi there. Welcome to the first part of limiting reactants. In this video, we're going to be talking about the concept of limiting reactants. Then, in the next video, part two, we'll be looking at some challenging calculations involving limiting reactants. Let's say we have a slice of bread and a slice of cheese. And that's going to make one delicious cheese sandwich. Let's say your friends want some too now. So you have you take three slices of bread and you take three slices of cheese and you can make three cheese sandwiches to watch Netflix. Let's say now you have five slices of bread and four slices of cheese. How many sandwiches can you make? Well, the right answer is four. Now, you should have thought about that. You have two different numbers on the left. Which one should I use to make my product? And it's always going to be the lower number, also known as the limiting reactant. That determines how much product you make. The other number, five, that was excess, meaning that by the end of this, you'll still have one slice of bread remaining. Let's try another example. Let's say nobody's in the mood for sandwiches and you want to make some burgers. So you grab two buns, you grab a patty. What's that? Is it vegan? It's whatever you want it to be. And you make a burger. Okay, so two buns, one patty equals one delicious juicy burger. Let's say we have four buns this time and two patties. That means we can make two burgers. Okay, what about this? What if we had four buns and three patties? How many burgers can we make now? The answer should still be two. And I'll show you how. Let's say that the ratio of buns to patties is two to one. And of course, burger is one as well. So what we have to do, first of all, we have to make them into a one to one ratio. So we're going to divide four by two and three, we leave it as one. So divide it by one. So that leaves us with two to three. From this, we look at the lower number. So the lower one is going to be two. That's our limiting reactant. Then we times it by the number in front of the product. So one one burger and that gives us two okay enough with food i'm getting hungry let's try some chemicals so let's say that calcium two calciums react with an oxygen to give you two calcium oxide so if i had 10 calciums and four oxygens how many calcium oxide will i get again what we have to do is compare them as a one-to-one -one. so there's a two in front of the calcium that means i'm going to divide it by two first Giving, giving me a five. Now in front of the oxygen, we have nothing. So you can assume it's one. So we can leave it the same. That leaves us with four. Now comparing those two, we can see that the four is the lower number, the limiting reactant. This number is now times by what's in front of your product, two. So that gives you eight. So there we go. The final answer is going to be eight calcium oxides. Let's try that same question with different numbers. If you have seven calciums and six oxygens, how many calcium oxides do you get? So we're gonna divide this by two, gives you 3.5. Remember there's a one there, so you keep it the same. So that's six. Comparing the numbers, we can see that 3.5 is the limiting reactant. And then we times it by the number in front of the product, which is two. So that gives us seven. Let's try a different equation. Two ions react with three chlorine to make two iron chlorides. Let's say we have 12 of each. How many products do we get? So right now we have to make them a one to one ratio. So that means we have to divide this by two. That gives you six and divide this by three, giving you four. What's lower? Four is lower. That's our limiting reactant. So we times that by the number in front of the product, which is two, and that gives you eight. Okay, let's have a go with a different equation. So titanium chloride reacts with four sodiums to make titanium and four sodium chloride. So I've got three titanium chlorides and eight sodiums. So remember, there's a one in front of this, so we leave it the same. And there's a four in front of the sodium, so we divide it by four. Now we look for the limiting reactant, which is two. Okay, we're going to times this by the number in front of our products. There's a one in front of titanium, so that stays as two. And there's a four in front of sodium chloride, so times it by four. So the final answer is that we get two titaniums and eight sodium chlorides. Okay guys, we're on the last example. 
hang in there, we're nearly finished. So titanium chloride, nothing, leave it as it is, there's a one in front of it. Sodium divided by four, which gives you five. The lower number is going to be four, that's our limiting reactant. Now times it by one for titanium, and times it by four for sodium chloride. So we get four titaniums and 16 sodium chlorides. Okay, well done. So if you found this interesting, move on to the next video on limiting reactants. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.